Linux is free, open source, comes up with lots of different software, everything is open source, is compatible with a lot of low-end hardware and doesn't require antivirus. But these are the reasons which you read in every single blog which says top 5 reasons to learn about Linux, top 10 reasons to learn Linux and all such crappy blogs that you read around. But these reasons definitely are not at all convincing enough to make sure that you get started to learn Linux. But in this video, I'm going to be sharing why you should be learning Linux. Okay, so everybody has heard about these things, that it's uh, open source, it's free, it uh, comes up with lots of distribution and everything like that. But uh, to be honest, for me, these reasons have never been convinced enough uh, so that I can get started to learn Linux. Uh, these are all crappy reasons. Uh, Honestly, if I would have been a Windows user or Mac users and you say that, hey, it doesn't require an antivirus or something like that, or a lot of softwares are free there, I wouldn't be jumping on to learning Linux because I, I would say, why would I learn uh, GIMP over Photoshop? Because to be honest, let's be practical here. Uh, there are a lot of job opportunities that says uh, we require a Photoshop expert, but there is no job opportunity that says, hey, we require a GIMP uh, expert there for designing our logo. No, it doesn't. So definitely, uh, if we get practical onto that side, uh, people will say that, hey, uh, or your mind will say actually that there is no scope of Linux learning and like that. But it's not at all true. It's completely wrong. Uh, not to the GIMP software actually, but a little bit different. So let me tell you why you should be learning. And these are the honest reasons. I hope many of you will agree. Now, let's just go back on to a little different time when you just saw for the first time Mac or for the first time Windows. And you might be wondering that why things are so much different. Why in the Windows there is a C drive and why while on the Mac there's just an application folder having one icon. So where did all those files go and why they look drastically different? It might be just the same hardware like a MacBook and if you, you have installed a Windows on the MacBook, why the things are so much different? Another question similar to like this, when you format a pen drive in a Mac, it doesn't work in the Windows. Why is that happening? And if you drill down a little bit, people might be saying words like uh, the formats are a little bit different. Mac uses uh, something else and Windows uses something else like EX, EXT FAT or uh, FAT, simply FAT32 or NTFS, while in the Linux it's basically EXT4. Now, not going too much into the technical details, but to be honest, what is this file system? Now, all these curiosity, which I believe every computer person should have, every IT professional should have, these curiosity will be solved when you will jump into the Linux. For me, that's that was basically the reason. I wanted to explore more about computers. I wanted to know more about the file system, structure, how the things are different. So that, that was all for me. I wanted to have more open mind system that uh, if I have to work on Windows, Linux or Mac, I, I should be ready for that. And as an IT professional, you should be. Now, a lot of you might be web developers or app developers and might be thinking, hey, we will never, uh, we will never need these kinds of Linux skills and anything. But trust me, if you are into the IT business, the more skills that you have, the more you're going to enjoy. Let's just say you are a website and uh, there's some permission issues with the files uh, and you have no idea what the permission is, what the file structure is you will not be able to solve these problems quickly. Of course, you can look around on the Stack Overflow, there will be hundreds of answers, you will eventually solve it, but that's not the point. The point is how well you are understanding your operating system, the thing that you are using every single day. You use a phone every single day, so you explore every single options, every single setting in that, and here you are working on a computer in front of you every single day and yet you don't want to explore why the things are different why if there is a command like ls uh, it's working there but in the windows it's not working there so all the things should be explored these uh, things should be there so that you can understand what is the open mindness that's that's actually what i i liked about it another thing that has uh, given me a boost to learn about the Linux is problem solving skills. Now, if you're a true coder or passionate about IT, you should understand one thing. There is never ever a smooth ride. Whether we are designing a website or maybe app, you will be stuck onto a problem for quite a long time and that's how it happens. Now, when you learn Linux as well, there will be a lot of problems, like a lot of your softwares will not be compatible or might not be compatible. Uh, sometimes you don't have to get connected to your Wi-Fi so much easily or many problems like that. 
Now, these problem solving skills um, may give you a little bit of the boost that yes, I, I want to solve that problem, I want to have that. So that's that's how actually it got started with me. Now, most people, why they do get started in the Linux is uh, basically of uh, two simple reasons. They found Ubuntu much more attracting or maybe CentOS was already installed on their uh, school. And the second reason they wanted to get started in information security and they found out that lots of information security tools are already pre-installed in Backtrack or Kali. So these are the two main reasons why people get started with the Linux. Now, I, I have no problem with that. Definitely, if you have got started already with the Linux, then it's a great thing. You should definitely do that. No matter what the reason, you might uh, coming up from the InfoSec industry or from uh, any other just curiosity, just do that. Now, uh, let me give you also a quick tip about uh, getting started with the Linux. Now, nowadays, things are really, really easy. Uh, I did a lot of certification in the Linux almost seven or eight years ago. Things were really different. Online industry was not that much good. Now you can just buy the most greatest course on the Linux in around 50 or $60 anywhere. Now, I'm not selling you anything in here. I'm just saying go ahead, uh, do a little bit of research or discuss uh, with other people or me to uh, grab a great course on the Linux. Now, online industry is so much great now that you can just buy any course in 50 or $60 from the greatest professional who is actually being delivering uh, or teaching the Linux for almost 10 or 11 years. So go ahead, grab yourself a great course on Linux and just try it out. But again, a very good point that I can give to you is don't switch on Linux. Now, you might get that completely wrong. I'm not saying if you wish, you can surely, but right from the straightforward, if you are get, getting attracted with the Linux system, don't switch it yet because you will face a lot of problem and that frustrating might land you up in not using the Linux. So what you should do, you should just use a software known as VirtualBox, which is gonna install uh, the entire Linux system on top of your operating system, just like a software, uh, just like a Photoshop. You can anytime install it and voila, it's gone. So uh, don't get into that frustration stage and try to use virtualized environment and try out different flavors of Linux, maybe Ubuntu, maybe Kali, maybe CentOS or Mint or PeerOS, which look alike for the Mac or Windows. So go ahead and try that out. I would be really happy if some of you would try out Linux. Uh, if, if you are just following along with me or just following what I'm saying, I would be really happy to say that some people were able to explore a little bit more about the Linux. And uh, that's what I want to say in this video.